This is a quick tutorial on how to determine the Weibull modulus for a set of data. So let's assume we start with some bar IDs, A1, A2, A3, A4. Now remember, with Weibull modulus, you want to do at least 20 bars. That's really the minimum. And the more you do, the better your data will be. So let's do, let's do 30 bars, right? So we have bars from A1 all the way down to A3. That's the name of these bars. This gives ourselves another row. Here we have the stress at which they failed at, right? So you could actually type in numbers if you had these. Uh, for the sake of this video, we're going to do just a quick random generator. So we'll say this is random between, um, I don't know, that they failed somewhere between 100 and say 500 megapascals, right? So it's going to randomly generate these. Again, when you do this homework, you won't need to use the random. You're just going to type in the numbers or paste them from the Excel sheet that we gave you. So that's the stress at which they failed. The next thing that you need to do then is you need to take this, copy it, come over here, paste it. You're going to do paste special, and you're going to paste it as values, right? So they've got the actual values that they were. Next step is you need to sort this. When you do this, we need to rank them, right? From 1, 2, 3, 4, do this all the way down to 30, right? We need the rank at which they failed going from 1 to 30. So we need to do this row we need to sort it from smallest to largest. You do that by right clicking, and you go to sort, and you're gonna sort from smallest to largest. We do not want to expand the selection. That's basically gonna sort the surrounding columns and stuff. Uh, we don't wanna do that. We just want the, the selection that's in there. So we only wanna sort things in this gray box. So hit sort, and now within this box, it goes from 108 up to 499, right? Uh, so that's the next step. Now we can determine F, right? F we determine by typing in equals all right, it's going to be parentheses. Inside the parentheses, we're going to take our rank minus 1 half, 0 0.5. And then we're going to divide that by the total number of bars, which in this case is 30. Right? You can drag that all the way down. And basically, things down here, by the time that you're at 499 megapascals, 98% of your bars have failed. Now, you might ask yourself, right, if 30 out of 30 failed, why is it 98? Why isn't it 1? The reason why is because we included this one half value in there. Adding that minus one half actually makes the failure probability analysis a little bit better, right? If you do with very, very large samples of numbers, then you don't need to include it. But for small ones, this actually makes it better, okay? Because we know that if we were to test more than 30 bars, the odds are that eventually we would find a compound that does survive at slightly higher than 499, right? Something like 499 and a half or something. Right? So we don't want to close the door on our failure probability and say that it's equal to 1 at 499 because technically we, there could be one that's a little bit higher and if we just tested more bars, it could be up there. Same thing on the other end. There might be a bar that fails at a lower stress than 108 since technically this could go from 100 up to 500. So we don't want to give it a zero failure probability. We want to give it a very small one and we account for that by including this negative uh, minus one half value. So that's F. So now we are ready to get our Weibull modulus plot together. We do that to plot Weibull modulus. We want our, um, our x value to be natural log of strength um, at failure, right? Let's give ourselves a little more room. And our y value, that's going to be natural log of natural log of 1 divided by 1 minus f, right? So let's go ahead and put these in. We're going to type here equals natural log of the failure stress, which is this one. Ranked failure stress, right? So there we go, drag that all the way down. Um, there we go. So that's natural log of the stress at which these things failed. Meanwhile, over here, we're gonna take, and this be natural log of natural log of one over one minus F and we're gonna go ahead and drag that all the way down. Now all we need to do is plot these two things against one another. So we highlight them, come up here to insert. We're gonna do just a scatter plot, and there we go. This is gonna be the base of our Y modulus plot. Now, it plot, let's change this scale a little bit. Let's have this go from, um, let's see. Alright, X is options, alright, where is that? Alright, we need this to go from, let's say, I don't know, on the X axis, we, instead of going from uh, 0, 
Sorry, let's switch to eggs. Okay. Finally. Instead of going from zero to seven, let's just go from four to seven, so this is a little bit clearer. It was harder than it needed to be. All right, so we've got that. All right, we can see our data. Let's go ahead and put a linear trend line through this. So we're gonna to go to add trend line after clicking on the data. Add trend line, we want it to be linear. We want to display the equation and the R squared value. So there we go, we see that up there. This other stuff is nonsense. Charts don't need titles. Okay, there we go, so that's our equation. From this equation, we know that this value right here that the 2.8941, that's our Weibull modulus. This right there, that's our Weibull modulus. And this negative 17.047, that's equal to Weibull modulus times natural log of the characteristic strength. So from there, you can do all the stuff that we talked about in class, and this is all you need to do is set up Weibull modulus. Again, if you have any questions, we have other great videos where we work through Weibull modulus problems, now using Weibull modulus to do design problems to figure out failure rates or to work out effective area or other questions like that, and those are linked below.